you know very well how to find out square roots of large numbers say you can find out the square root of 120409 either by prime factorization method or by long division method but we know that numbers don't exist like this only there may be a number say 12.0409 then what will you do then how do we find out the square root of such a number let's see well this can be found out by long division method again now the long division method remains the same only slight changes are there or slight differences are there we'll see what are they see first of all we write the number like this what is the first step in long division method we start placing the bar how do we place the bar we place the bar from the ones digit that is from that side but when it is a decimal number then this thing changes what we do is we place the bar separately from the decimal point from the decimal point towards the ones digit and after the decimal point from this side only that is from left to right so let's start placing the bar from the decimal point to the left we will place a bar over a pair of digits like this suppose one digit were there say 5 here then you could place a bar over that also so remember when there is a decimal point start placing the bar from the ones digit before the decimal point now what about the digits after the decimal point well start placing the bar from the left hand side only that is from these numbers so you go this way so when there is a point say a decimal point you start placing a bar first this way and then for the digits on this side you start placing the bar from this way so let's place a bar here over pairs of digits so we have successfully placed the bars like this now what do you do first step was placing the bar next we take this first pair of digits now think about a number which when squared gives a number less than or equal to 12 think about such a number well think about the squares of natural numbers what is 3 square 9 and what is 4 square 16 so which number can be taken here 9 can be taken because 16 will go beyond 12 so 3 into 3 gives us 9 why are we doing this because this digit here and this digit here this quotient needs to be the same so subtract this 12 minus 9 gives us 3 we are done with this next what we do next we copy the next pair of digits but the thing is here we have a decimal point in between so whenever we have a decimal point here and you finish with the digits before the decimal point just put this decimal point in the quotient as well and your decimal problem is over so you don't need to care about the decimal any more once you have put it here so what did we do first finish off with this digit say 3 three 3s are 9 and you got the remainder and so the work of this 12 is over now you saw before bringing down the next pair of digits one point is there so put that point in the quotient as well and your game of decimal point is over over here so copy down 04 now next what do we do we double this quotient and write it as a new divisor so we'll do it again so 3 doubled we get 6 and we put a blank towards its right so we do it like this and we have to find another number here well what will be that number we remember that the number here has to be the same number which when multiplied with this whole number gets a value less than or equal to this new dividend so the digit we are going to put here shall be the same digit we have to write as the next quotient right so just recall long division method how do we do that we'll do the same thing over here so find out that digit here 
Well, 63 into 3, what will we get? 189. Well, that is less than 304, but let's verify again. 64 into 4. You can see we are using the same digits here. So 64 into 4, what do we get? 256. Well, this is even less than 304, but let's try another number. 65 into 5. Now, this is going beyond 304, so the option that we'll take is this one. So, put 4 here and put 4 here also. Now, find out the remainder. What do you get? Now, after we find out the remainder, what do we do? We copy the next pair of digits, that is 0, 9. That is exactly how we do long division method. The decimal problem was over here. So, copy 0, 9. Here. Now, what do we do? We have to double this quotient and write it as a new divisor. So, doubling this, what we will get? 34 into 2 and put it with a blank right next to it. So, now we have to find a number which when multiplied or you can say which when put here and then multiplied with the whole number, we get exactly the same or a value less than this new dividend. So, think about such a number. Well, let us check with some numbers. Say 686 into 6, what do you get? Well, this is less than this, but then we have to check with another number. Check with this. See we have arrived to the exact number. So, let us write this 7 here and 7 here. So, 4, 8, 0, 9. Well, the remainder is 0 because we have got the exact digit. So, we can say that root over 12.0409 is 3.47. This is the square root of this decimal number. Now, Every time a decimal number may or may not be a square number. So, here there is a number, say 5.462. This is not a square number. Or say, I am not sure whether this is a square number or not. So, now let us find out the square root of this number. Well, if you notice closely, you can see that both ways the pairs of digits are cannot be grouped. First of all, what we do? We start from this way, that is before the decimal digit, we go this way. So, I cannot pair it. So, let me put a single bar on a single digit. Now, we go towards the right after the decimal point. So, first pair can be formed, but again 2 is left behind. But as I have put a bar over here, I cannot put a bar on a single digit after the decimal point. Then, what can I do? Well, you know that if there is a number, say 546, this is 546, I can put a 0 here. If I put a 0 here, is the value of 546 changing? Well, obviously, from 546, it has become 5460. So, putting a 0 here changes this value. So, this is not possible. But, what if I say 5.46? this number and 5.460. Now, is there any difference between these two? Tell me. Well, if you know the concept of decimals very well, you can tell if that 5.46 and 5.460 are exactly the same. You can add any amount of zeros after this, but even then the value of 5.46 and the 5.460000 will not differ. It will remain the same. So, here what we can do? We can put a 0. 
because adding a 0 to 5.462 will not change its value. So if I'm adding a 0, my work is being done. I am getting a digit for my bar because these digits need to be in pairs. So I can add a 0 only if it is a decimal number. Remember, do not do it if this is not a decimal number. If this is a decimal number and you are getting a shot for a digit to become a pair, so you can add a 0. But in a normal number, you cannot do that. So here we have got a pair exactly. Now how we will proceed? Well, just now I have taught you how to find out the square root of a decimal number. The same procedure will be repeated here. So find it out yourself. First of all, we will think of a number that is when squared will give us less than or equal to this number. Well, even on seeing this, I can remember that 2 squared gives us 4 and that is the only digit which will get us equal to or less than this or otherwise 1 could be the digit. So let us take 2 into 2, 4. Now subtracting it, we get 1. Now what is the next step? Copy this down. Well, again the same thing. Point is here. And uh, before copying this down, you have to put this point on the quotient. So that the decimal thing comes on the quotient as well. So this decimal point has been put on the quotient just after we finish with the digits before the decimal point. So now copy this 46 here. That is the next pair of digits. And double this quotient to get the new divisor. So doubling this what we get? 4. Put it with a blank. Now think about the number which when put here and here as well that is multiplied with this whole number gives us a value equal to or less than this. Think about say 43 into 3. What do you get? 129 less than 146 but to be sure let's confirm. See we had got the right one only first. Again, we are done with this. Now what do we do? We copy the next set of numbers. So we have copied the next pair of numbers here. What do we do next? We have to double this quotient and put it here. Well, do not double 2.3 and write down 4.6 here, here. That is not the thing we are doing here. We are just doubling the quotient without the decimal point. And put it here or a blank. Now think of a number, the same procedure here. Well, this is 2 less than 1720. Let's think about another number. Well, this is also less. Let's confirm. Well, this is going beyond 1720. So we'll take this one. 1389. Find out the remainder. Now, just now I told you that if you add, say, a 0 or two zeros, three zeros or any number of zeros after a decimal point in any number, in any decimal number, the value of the number does not change. So again, if I want to say put zero here, I want to add some digits so that I can continue the sum. So I need to put some digits here. So zero is the digit that I can put here because any decimal number will not change its value if I am putting any number of zeros after the decimal point, that is in the last of the digit. So here, I can put a 0. But will that help? See, 
we need digits in pairs you can see that we need digits in pairs so we have to put two zeros here again this will not affect my decimal number so adding two digits gets me a bar as well so what do i need to do i need to copy this bar here that is the pair of digits here see i am getting a new dividend for my sum so i can now continue this sum now what do i need to do i got the new dividend i need the new divisor we have to double this to get the new divisor so doubling this what do we get 466 enter it with a blank on its right like this now again the same thing will be repeated think about the digit here that when multiplied with this get as a value equal to or less than this new dividend what will be the digit let's check well this is close but then we have to check well this is again quite close now you can see that this one goes beyond this so we cannot use this we will use this one so let's write it well we'll get get a remainder we got the remainder but then we do not need to do it further because we were asked to find out the square root up to two decimal places now suppose if you are asked to uh, find out up to more decimal places what will you do again add pa pair of zeros put bars in front of them and continue with the sum here we have got 2.337 now we can see that the last digit is more than 5 so we'll round it off we get 2. So this is the square root of this sum. That is five point four six two. When square rooted, gives us two point three four.